Good morning, Ranchview, and welcome to day 14 of Elena Music Online. Happy Tuesday. I hope everyone had a great weekend. We are getting into week four now of online school. And just as a reminder, there's no school on Friday. And then next week, Monday is a teacher work day. So you have a nice long weekend to relax and decompress. So for today, office hours are 10, 15 to 11. Use that as a time to get any questions, especially for note flight that you might have answered. Um, or just come and hang out. I like getting a chance to chat with all of you guys and see you since that's the only time we really get to hang. Um, sectionals for today. Due to a lot of requests on yesterday's check-in qu uh, question, I had a lot of people ask, can sectionals be a little bit longer? And I had a lot of positive feedback from our larger group sectionals that we did on Friday. So we're gonna rotate a little bit more quickly throughout the week now. We're gonna do 30 minute sectionals instead of 20, and we're gonna do full ensemble. That means that when you come in for your sectional, I really want you to stop and ask me questions if you need me to play your part again, if you need clarification on a section, on an entrance, on pitch, on fingering, on anything like that. Um, so make sure that you're asking me questions. So for today, we're going to start with choir at 11 o'clock, and then we'll do orchestra at 1130. So the way this will work going forward is we'll rotate through the ensembles. Percussion will always meet as part of band. Remember that sectionals are always optional. You do not have to come, but this is the best opportunity for you to get questions on entrances, questions on rhythms, questions on diction, questions on how does my part fit with another part. So that's where you're gonna get those answered. I have a lot of shout outs for today. So shout outs today go to Audrey, Jillian, Peyton, Joaquin, Anton, Kyle, Opal, Shanette, Allie, and Audra. You guys were the first people to submit performance recordings for this quarter. So I'm now going to start putting those together into performance videos as well as practice tracks. So those of you that are struggling with entrances or need to hear how your part fits in, you're going to start to hear some of those coming out. So moving forward, our goal is going to be to record one video every week. Moving on. Um, and as I get those, I'll start putting them together into what will ultimately become our performance videos that we'll put out in May as our Pops concert. All right. So for today, your performance goal is, as always, to practice 15 to 30 minutes and journal as you go. I want you to pick a song that you're really, really comfortable with this time. We've done your challenging ones. We've done specific required ones. Now it's your choice to choose, or now it's your chance to choose one that you really enjoy, you feel really solid on. And I want you to check in. Where are you struggling? Where are you doing well? Always write that down in your journal. That journal is a way for you to continue to evaluate yourself and improve your own playing so that on Thursday, when we ask to record a performance video, you might have one that's closer to that seven or eight range. All right. Um, band. I have up the, uh, uploaded all of the Lady Gaga hit mix parts. Um, and remember, band, that these are optional. Not everyone was ready, but the, but the majority was. So we put those up there for those who want it. If you're not ready to add Lady Gaga to your repertoire, then wait. Don't do it yet. Focus on what you already have until you're ready. That said, those of you that submitted your all-star recordings are probably ready for something new. So check out Lady Gaga. It is in a weird key for band. So please double check your key signature, especially alto and berry sax. You guys have a lot of sharps. You also have some double sharps in there. So as you're going through this, mark anything that you need to ask me if you're getting stuck on any of those notes. Um, as far as note flight for today. So we're moving into kind of the more abstract creativity part of things. By now you should have your duet pretty well set up and now we get to start changing things and creating them. So I'm gonna move over to the computer, show you a couple of things that you can start to work with. As always, please come check in for office hours if you have questions on it and um, let's do it. All right, so looking here, I've created a demo version. This is just Mary Had a Little Lamb. I just wanna use this version to show you some things that you can do as you're going through and, and updating and creating some new things for your instruments. So if you look here, I've got a duet for alto sax and trombone. It's Mary Had a Little Lamb, so if you listen to it, it sounds pretty okay. So, not bad.
bad. There's nothing wrong with it. All the notes are correct. All the rhythms are correct. But the first thing I want you to take a look at is look at both parts individually as you if you were playing that part. So looking at my alto sax, they've got a good mix of quarter notes and half notes. They've got the melody. They're probably pretty okay with that. My trombone player, on the other hand, has nothing but whole notes. More than likely, that trombone player is going to be pretty bored. The only interesting thing that happens at all for them is they have two half notes there, and that's not really a whole lot of excitement. So if you're afraid that one of your players will be bored, then you maybe want to try changing some things up. Before we do any changes, make sure that you are editing in concert pitch. So remember up here on this score section, click the little tuning fork that says show in concert pitch so that you're in the same key signature. You are less likely to make mistakes if you do things that way. So I'm going to show you a couple of options that make really, really small changes, but make your music a lot more interesting. So the first thing is called um, neighboring tones. So a neighboring tone would be any time you have two notes in a row that are exactly the same. So if you look at this trombone part, their first and their second note are the same. So if I want to add a neighboring tone, a neighbor would be one note higher or one note lower than the two notes that are the same. So I'm going to take this first note, turn it into a half note, and then I'm going to add a neighbor. So the neighbor, let's do one note higher. So now he's got some half notes in there. And if you listen to the difference, it still fits, it still works, but it's a little bit more interesting for that trombone player. So that's all it is, it added a tiny little change. The other thing you can do is what's called a passing tone. So if you have a couple of notes in a row that are different, then you can pass through to it. So for example, if I wanted to pass from this note to the last note, I have enough time that I could add a couple of notes in there. We're just gonna pass from that G to that C. Passing notes are gonna go directly in order, straight up the scale. So I'm gonna take this note here, I'm going to turn it into eighth notes, and then I'm just going to go up the scale. So adding the next note up, the next note up, and then I'm there, I've made it up to that next note. So let's listen to how that changed it. A lot more interesting there at the ending. So that's neighboring tones, either one above or one below and passing tones, passing through from one note to the next. If you want to add some harmony, let's say, for example, that this part right here sounds pretty boring to you. What you can do is you can take and add some harmony. This note right here, you've got three Ds in a row on your saxophone part. You can take those three Ds and you can add what's either called a third or a fifth above that note. So choir, we've done this in intervals before. Band and orchestra, this might be new. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy that measure into the other part, just like we did last week. So now it's the same. And because that's so high, I'm gonna bring it down an octave. So control, down. Okay, I like the look of that better. Now to add a third, if this note is one, the space above it would be two, and the line above it would be three. So I'm gonna add a note right there, a note right there, and a note right there. Turn that back into a half note. All right, so now I've got thirds. The problem with this is, remember, your trombone player can only play one note at a time. So we're gonna have to go back and delete the note that you added. Let's say I'll delete that one, delete that one, delete that one. Now, let's listen to how that changed things. A little bit more interesting there, just giving the trombone player something to do. Another harmony that you can add really well is fifths. If you wanted to add a fifth, same deal, let's put it in this measure here. So we're going to copy that, put it in the other part, I'm thinking those are too high, so I'm going to bring them down. Control down arrow. Okay, and then I'm going to add a fifth. So if that's one, 
the line is 2, the space is 3, the line is 4, and the space is 5. So we're going to add a fifth to each of those notes. Now, again, we have to delete one of those because they can only play one at a time. But there's nothing that says you have to have them all be the same, right? So I'm going to delete this one. And then I'm going to delete this one. And then this one. And then this one. So now, let's see what that sounds like when we play it back. That's a lot more interesting. Now your trombone player's got a whole lot to do. Your saxophone is in charge of the melody the whole time, which saxophones like, so they're probably okay. But if you wanted to, you can add some of that to them too. So let's take a look at a neighboring tone first. You've got three E's in a row here for this ax. So let's say we want to add a neighboring tone in between these first two. We're going to click on that first one. I'm going to turn it into an eighth note so that I can add more notes. And then before, with our trombones, we did a neighbor above. Now we're going to do a neighbor below. So we'll add a note there. So now we've got our neighbor going down. And what about a passing tone? How about here? Between these two notes, we're going to add a passing tone. I'll turn that into an eighth note so we can move a little faster. And we'll add the note right in between those two. All right. So there's a neighboring tone and a passing tone for our melody. What about harmony? I'm probably not going to harmonize the melody because they're the melody. We still need to be able to recognize it. So I think that's all I'm going to change for melody. And let's take a listen to that. There you have it. A lot more interesting than what we started with. So that's where I would start with. Play around with a couple of things there. Maybe try some harmony. Maybe try some passing and neighboring tones. Once you've done all of that, the last thing to do is uncheck that show in concert pitch. And now double check your range. Always check your range in written pitch rather than concert pitch, just to make sure that it fits your individual instrument. And that's it for today. So play around, nothing to submit, practice for 15 to 30 minutes, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.